The following is a fan-based discussion. All properties discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, Hasbro, and Subarai Productions. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Toku Cast Reviews, episode number 153. Marcus and Jacob here to review Common Rider, as its title card says, or Sky Rider, as it has since come to be called. No. This is a show that sure does exist. It does. As a show. Uh, that is a true statement. Um, Starting with the opening? May as well. It's as good a place to start as any. I mean, yeah, that's where we normally start. <laughs> It's an opening. I honestly, I I finished the show yesterday. I don't remember it. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> that that could be said for about everything that happens. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this might end up being our new Wind Spectre, in all honesty. That Wind Spectre review was nine minutes. Is that how long it was? Yes. I feel like it was shorter. <laughs> well, let's do a brief rundown of the show itself and then talk about... I, get, I have some thoughts about, like, the genre as a whole and how it relates to this. Especially during this time period. Mm hmm So, Common Rider. I did not know this show wasn't called Sky Rider. Yeah. And I feel like a bit of an idiot for not knowing that. <laughs> it was a reboot, more or less. This was, this was, it was a revival of Common Rider. This is the first Common Rider we have had since Stronger, which aired its, uh, ended its run in 75 this was 79, four years later. And it's about a guy who runs afoul of Neo Shocker. Uh, he gets turned into a cyborg. His friends get killed first. Oh, yeah, they die. On a camping trip. Yeah. Best place. Uh, so that happens. And then he becomes Kamen Rider after the surgery. And then he proceeds to fight monsters until the show ends. That is this show. It is nothing more. It is nothing less. There's no character, really. <laughs> yeah, that brings me to my to one of my main sticking points. Is there anything? Is there anything you would like to say before we move on? The most interesting parts of this show are when the other writers show up, hmm. and that's it. Nothing in this show really makes me excited to watch it. Which is weird, because I'm sort of looking forward to Super 1, if only because I know it's going to be at least a little bit different. He has all the hands and all the different styles His of martial, martial arts. martial arts theme, which yeah. I know you're a big fan of. So I'm, I'm excited to watch Super 1. Mm -hmm. This. And I, I you're going to go into a lot more depth than I am on this. The character just wasn't there. The main character just, he doesn't have any charisma. No. <laughs> Not much I can say. I mean, there there's a lack of charisma, actually. It's just like, I'm here to fill a spot. I'm here to be protagonist. He doesn't have, like... It's always unfair, especially during this time period, to try to measure anybody up to Hiroshi Minuchi mm -hmm. as V3. Mm -hmm. Because V3 was just like charisma incarnate for pretty much that entire show. Stronger had a lot of charisma as well. We just didn't like the show that much. <laughs> But this guy, he really felt like he was just there to fill a spot. And it's weird because we're going into the 80s when things really start to change. Mm -hmm. for, at least for how the stories are told, how the characters are presented. And we end up getting some truly interesting characters uh, going forward. We didn't get that here. And I feel like it really made this show a slog to watch. The most interesting part of your show should not be when the previous writers come back. I feel. I feel like you have to have something outside of that, and this show doesn't. <laughs> so you're just basically there the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we don't usually text each other about what we're thinking of a show. Usually we wait until the review to get our thoughts out. But uh, this is one of the times you texted me, and you told me... Yeah, not really. You're like, yeah, for some reason this isn't clicking with me. And I was like, well, I can think of a few reasons. I'm going to read them off here. 
For something that was billed as a relaunch, there is a complete lack of innovation in any aspect that I saw in other show writers. You are, they took four years off. For Toku, that is unprecedented. Not so much at the time. Yeah, I mean, even at the time, but like, you look at, I mean, Sentai had been going for so long, and Ryder had been going, and then for them... Actually, to, really enough, they both came back the same year, because they took 1978 off. Dude, well, I mean, that's <laughs> one year for one, but this is yeah. four years for Ryder. For four years, they come back, they relaunch it, we're just going to call it Common Ryder. You know, later we're going to call him Sky Rider, just to avoid confusion, I suppose. They actually started calling him that in shows. Well, when Stronger yeah. shows up, he calls him Sky Rider to yeah. differentiate him. <laughs> they thought of that on the day. It's like, wait a minute, they're all named Common Rider. Yeah. Dang it. Uh, Build is a relaunch. Just like, we, we've gone four years, but we haven't moved an inch. It's, here's a monster. There's bad guys. There's some people being menaced by said monster. Common Rider's got to stop him. And then he does. And what my second point was, like a lot of Toku, it's a show that exclusively deals with melodrama. When I say melodrama, I mean good versus evil. That's what melodrama means. Characterization is left by the wayside in, what fe- in favor of what feels like going through the motions that have already been established. So I, I look back at like all the stuff that we reviewed for this channel. The stuff that stands out to me as being the best of the best whether it's something like Don Brothers, whether it's something like Zenkaiger, something like Jetman, Live Man, uh, Kuga, uh, which I didn't watch, but um, I was going to say X Aid. Yeah. I think is another great example. Uh, Ultraman uh, Jeed, Ultraman X. They're shows that are about characters, they are about these people, these heroes, these villains, and it's, a, it's about them. It's not about it's not about hero meets villain, villain defeats hero. Yeah, that's part of it. That is that is something that happens in all those shows. They're, they are they are all about the Toku in its as a whole is melodrama. It's all about the struggle of good versus evil. But to paraphrase something that John Campia has said, if you're not attached to the characters and you're not invested in who they are or what they're doing or what's going on, then everything else is just noise. This whole show, like a lot of other mediocre things we've watched for this channel or bad things we've watched for this channel, it's just, it's like 50 episodes of white noise. Yeah. Because there's nothing for you to grab onto and there's nothing for you to latch onto as far as character goes. And it's weird, because you're coming off of sh- Stronger. Yeah, it was four years before him. But, I mean, you had, like, a whole arc really between him and Tackle. And him not wanting Tackle to fight because life of a comrade is really hard. And then mm-hmm. she does fight, and then she dies. And it's just like, you know, that he felt guilty for really a lot of the rest of that show. And uh, the anger that Hiroshi, uh, Hiroshi Miyuchi felt in V3. It's just like that was his motivation pretty much throughout that entire show, everything that happened to his family. Mm -hmm. So it's like we had something to really attach on to because they had a legitimate strong emotion that really went throughout the rest of that show. Mm -hmm. With this, it's like you could have had something at the beginning. And it's like they sort of did that for the first one to two episodes and then didn't do anything with it. Like my friends were killed by Neil Shocker. I got turned into a cyborg. Revenge. And <laughs> we, we, there's no buildup from that. No, the story pretty much peaks in the first episode. Yeah, that's, it really and, does. And from uh, and then from there on out, other writers show up, and that's exciting. But that's it. They don't use any any of these situations where you know some group of people are being menaced by monster of the week. They don't use that situation as any kind of opportunity to inform our lead's character at all. Yeah, he just shows up. Kicks ass, leaves, and then that's it. That's really exactly what he does, too. He'll just, like, uh, kid gets kidnapped. Kid is taken away in the truck. Dog dies. That was, ugh. <laughs> uh, and then you just see him come around the corner on his bike. Because he's there to save the day. And you, that's every episode. You can fly. Why do you have a motorcycle? He actually stops flying halfway through because of money, more than likely. 
That was just, that was something about the show. Like log- that was one of the few logic things that bugged me. Is you can fly? Why are you riding a motorcycle? That's your name. Your name is Skyrider, honey. You should be in the air. <laughs> but no, only in certain situations. And I don't mind. I don't mind that it's you know even if it is a you know a toy on a string that they're. Floating past I the background. I don't that. mind. I love that, actually. I don't mind that at all. That's one of that's, my favorite if, things. If that's what you have to work with, that's fine. It's added to comedy. But be a little more consistent with it. It's one of the things that make one of the things that makes him stand out from the other writers before him and sense to a certain degree, because very few others can do this, is the ability to fly. Have some fun with that. It's one of those things where, once again, you sort of have to look at the show in a time capsule because of when it was on television and how standards ended up changing, especially after it, mm. almost immediately. Um, it it doesn't hold up. <laughs> I think we've established that. But yeah, yeah. Like, like I'm just talking about just as itself. It There's nothing about this show that makes it stand out. He stops flying 25 episodes in. And it it's it's not interesting. It's a it's a slog to watch. I will honestly say that. We'll see what happens when we reach sort of, I guess, the end of our comrade reviews until Geats finishes with a Super, Super one. one. Yeah. But what else? Although we do have another one that will be coming up soon because it'll line up perfectly with our next review. That it will. Uh, next time because I I think we're done talking about this show. I think that, I think we've said that what needs to be said. Yeah. Next time, we'll be doing a Shin Kamen Rider. Uh, because it'll, it's a fathom event, I believe. Yep. Uh, and we'll be reviewing it the weekend after it gets shown in the States. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, look forward to it's, that. It's uh, May 31st is when we're, we're going to see it. Yep. Going to the theater. Theater. To see it. And I'm so excited that we get to do this twice in one year. I know, right? We get to, twice in one year, we get to go see a big reboot Toku movie on the big screen. Shin Go Ranger, please. What a time to be alive. Shin Go Ranger, please. <laughs> Update those suits. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let us know what you thought of Skyrider in the comments below. Don't forget to join us all the things. We'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching.